Y'all got quiet, quick. Leave it all behind. Leave it all behind. Leave it all behind. Leave it all behind. I've got what you need. But you keep on searching I've done all the work But you keep on working When you run it on empty Can't find a remedy Just come to the well You can spend your whole life Chasing what's missing, but that empty inside, you just ain't gonna listen. But nothing can satisfy when the world leaves you high and dry. Just come to the well, and all who thirst will thirst. All who search will find what they're so long for. The world will try, but it can never fail to leave it all behind and come to the will. So bring me your heart. No matter how broken, just come as you are. When your last prayer is spoken, just rest in my arms a while. You'll feel the change, my child, when you come to the will. And all who thirst to will thirst no all who search will find what they're so long for. The world will try, but it can never fail to leave it all behind and come to the world again. Now that you're full of love beyond measure, the world's gonna flow like a stream in the desert. Soon all the world will see living water is found in me, cause you've come to the way. All who thirst will thirst no more. All who search will find what they're so long for. The world will try, but it can never fail. So leave it all behind. Come to the way. Come to the well Leave it all behind 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 Come to the well
Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning, church. Father God, we come to you today, Lord, and we just thank you for this opportunity, this privilege, Lord, to gather in your house, Lord, to leave the world behind, even if it's just for a few moments, and Lord, just to turn to you. And Lord, I pray that you just fill us with the living water here this morning, Lord. I pray that you would just give us perspective. And uh, Lord, I pray that most of all, that you'd be glorified through this service, Lord. We just ask these things in Christ's name, and God's people said, Amen. Well, church, it is good to see you on this beautiful morning, and I do mean beautiful. I am so glad to see the rain and to see the humidity dropping and just uh, be refreshed uh, with uh, the showers from heaven. And as you can see, uh, we are in back here this morning, and uh, VBS will be taking place this week, and uh, it'll, it'll start tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. It'll run from 6 to 8.30, Monday through Friday of this week. And as you can see, the, the theme this week is a Zoomerang in the Outback. Go ahead and watch the video. G'day mates, welcome to Zoomerang. As we zoom around Australia, we'll discover some amazing animals and sights. More importantly, like a boomerang, we are returning kids to what the Bible says about the value of life. We'll discover how precious each and every one of us is to God, from the tiniest to the oldest. Each person is made in the image of God, wonderfully designed to know Him and to live for Him. Out of His great love, God offers us salvation through His Son, Jesus. Kids will learn that life is valuable. Grab your sunnies, that's your sunglasses, and your mates, those are your friends, and get ready for a fair dinkum time at Zoomerang. So as you can see, the focus of this year's VBS is, to, is on the value of life. And I think this is just so important. I've looked at the curriculum. I'm so excited about uh, uh, what the kids are going to be learning. It's going to combat uh, what kids are, are learning in our society today, where life is being diminished, that life is being devalued by a lot of these uh, pushes and, and things that are going on in our world. So we're going to be looking at that this week, uh, instilling in that at a very young age that our lives are valuable, that we are made in the image of God, and nothing about that needs to be changed. Uh, so we are excited about that this week. Again, it starts at 6 o'clock. They'll have dinner from 6 to 6.30, and then VBS will take place from 6.30 uh, to 8.30 all week long. Uh, we have something for, for kids as ages 4 through 8th uh, uh, grade. Uh, so I'm just uh, asking you to be inviting your friends, your family, uh, parents, grandparents, be bringing your, your children and your grandchildren. I think this will just be a life-changing experience here uh, for them in the life of the church. Uh, a few things that we're needing help with. First off, if you're here and you can help on uh, Monday or Wednesday, starting about 3.30, we need help preparing the meals on those two days in particular. So Monday and Wednesday, if you can help and be here early, please see Travis before you leave here today. We're also going to need help on uh, Saturday morning around 9 o'clock to clean everything up uh, that, that you see here in the church. I don't think it'll take long. We'll take it down in a hurry, uh, but we do need uh, uh, help on Saturday morning. Um, if any of the teachers, I know there's a lot of you, if you need printouts uh, for your lessons, please see Travis as well. He'll get those printouts to you if you need additional uh, uh, printouts. Also, back at the registration where the kids register at the computer, uh, there are sign-up sheets, uh, uh, registration forms. If you'll take those uh, today as you leave, get them filled out and come back and bring them with you tomorrow, that'll help with the registration process as all the kids are coming through uh, tomorrow night. So just remember that as well. If you have any questions, uh, please see uh, uh, Travis uh, again before you leave here uh, this morning. Due to the fact that VBS is taking place all week, that is, that is the, the name of the game this week. There will be no men in prayer tomorrow night. There will also be no journey team gathering on Wednesday night. Um, also, we would like to go ahead and announce on Saturday, July 30th, we're going to be having a cornhole tournament here at the church. Uh, this is open to everyone, ages 13 and older. It'll be a blind draw, so, so we'll, we'll do the draw here that morning when everybody gets here. It'll be a double elimination tournament, no entry fee. Uh, if you have boards, bring your boards, bring your bags. This is just going to be a time of fun and fellowship. The only thing you're playing for this, this time is bragging rights. Uh, so if you've got skills, come on and bring them. We'll see who, who's the best. So uh, just, again, another time 
another uh, opportunity uh, for you to get connected to the church and just have a time of enjoy, enjoyment uh, together. We've scheduled another baptism for Sunday, July 31st at 2 o'clock. If you're here and that's something you've been considering, please see me uh, before you leave here today. We're excited uh, that God has given us so many opportunities to, to have baptisms uh, here to church. So just remember that as well. Uh, the Operation Christmas Child July emphasis, uh, as as you can see on the screen, we're looking for rope and clothespins. We're going to be making uh, clothesline kits as well as ball caps and boy shirts. Uh, and again, we ask that those caps and shirts be new or like new. We're going to uh, have another couple of months of emphasis, and then we're going to roll into to starting to put these shoe boxes together. So just keep that in mind. You've done such a wonderful job, church, uh, providing the supplies to make that a success. I do believe uh, we will reach that 400 shoe box uh, mark uh, this year. As I mentioned last, last week, we have uh, 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 new pastor email addresses, pastoranthony at 68 at gmail.com, as well as Pastor Travis 3 at Yahoo. If you need to get in touch with us, uh, that is a way that you can, can do so. Uh, you can also use the general uh, uh, church email address as well to get in touch with myself, so just keep those in mind. As I mentioned last week as well, uh, the Hope ha uh, uh, Paddle Happy Days will be taking place on August 13th. I think many of you have signed up for that. After that float, we're going to be having a cookout there on the New River. And if you would like to be a part of that, if you're not floating but would like to be a part of that cookout, there's a sign-up sheet at the back. We need you to get signed up so we make sure we've got enough hamburgers and hot dogs and, and the fixings there for that evening. We also are asking that you bring a, a lawn chair if you're planning to come uh, just to enjoy, again, that time of fun and fellowship there by the river on August 13th. If you need more information, please see Brian Hill uh, before you leave here uh, this morning. If you noticed on the cafe, if you come in on the 52 side, uh, there's a bunch of corn there in the cafe. That's free for anyone who would like to take it. We had that donated to us this week. Uh, there's bags out there. So as you leave here today, if you'd like to have some of that corn, help yourself. Uh, that is what it's there for. And I think that would be a benefit, especially with the way uh, prices are going uh, uh, here lately. So just keep that in mind uh, here this morning. Uh, last week I mentioned that... Uh, the leadership team has put together uh, a facility use policy, and if you are here and you're going to be using uh, the cafe, you'll be receiving one of these letters. Uh, what we've done is we've tried to uh, outline how the church can be used just to prevent it from being used in a way that it doesn't need to be used. Within it, we're also outlining how, how the church is to be cared for after it is used. Uh, there's a checklist included, and uh, we ask that you, you address all the items on that checklist, sign your name, and leave it there in the cafe. Every time you use the cafe, whether it's one time a year or three times a year, three times a year, you'll be receiving uh, this letter uh, as we try to take care of what God has provided uh, for us, okay? I think that's all the announcements I have this morning. Uh, the prayer list continues to stay very, very long, and I ask that if you have uh, put individuals on the prayer list that you look and make sure that it is up to date. Uh, if not, I'm going to be sending out text all week long uh, to make sure everything is up to date here on the prayer list this upcoming week. So I do ask that you look that over. If there's updates that need to be made, let me know before you leave here this morning or text or call me sometime uh, this week. We want to make sure that it is as up to date as possible. One uh, uh, individual we'd like to add this morning would be Ernie Smith. Uh, he has been diagnosed with cancer and taken treatment, uh, so we'd like to add him here, here today. Again, if there's others that need to be added, see me before you leave here this morning. At this time, I'm going to ask that we stand and worship the Lord together.
die. Hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away. To a land where joy shall never Just I'm loving these old hymns. Loving them. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love. Heal and forgive to live and die to buy my pardon an empty grave is there to prove my Savior Cause he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know. A newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he is, but greater steam the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because Christ lives because he lives I can face tomorrow Amen. because Life is worth the living 
king just because he We're keeping it simple this morning. Sometimes less is more. We'll go ahead at this time and let our children make their way to the back. And uh, I think they'll find the back just as exciting as what they're seeing here in the front in the cafe and in the, uh, the sanctuary here this morning. And I would just like to take the opportunity to thank all those who... Uh, sacrificed their time to, to be here at church this week to make all that you see around you uh, a reality, to bring the church to life. Uh, it seemed like every time I was in and out of the church, there was someone here working uh, throughout the week. And as I told you a couple of weeks ago, I think that is the key if uh, we are wanting to experience future success, continued success here at the church. We have got to maintain uh, a heart of service. And I just think uh, you guys uh, for what you've done and I'm looking forward uh, to uh, what this upcoming week is going to bring. I think uh, we are laying up treasures in heaven uh, when we do things with as uh, much excellence as we can. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and invite you to take your Bibles and turn with me to 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 4. And today we're going to be looking at a number of things as it uh, pertains uh, to verse 13. Uh, now, last week, if you were here, you know that we began this new sermon series that I've entitled uh, Above and Beyond. And the intent of this series is to get our minds off the things of this world. I think so many of us are distracted uh, by all the things that we're facing here in this world. And the intent and purpose is to get our minds off the things of this world and direct it uh, towards the things of God. Again, we are told in Colossians chapter 3, beginning in verse 1, if you are risen with Christ, if you are a believer this morning, you are to seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on the things of this world. So again, we are commanded here to set our affection, to set our hearts, and to set our minds on things above. We are to be seeking Christ, and to seek Christ is to be seeking heaven. 
Uh, Yet for so many of us, we think about heaven uh, very little, if any, I think, over the course of our daily lives. And last week in our introductory sermon, we looked at a number of reasons as to why we as believers neglect to think about heaven like we do. Uh, First of all, and I think we uh, would all agree this morning, if we're being completely honest with ourselves, uh, that uh, we neglect heaven because we're too preoccupied uh, with this world. We hold this world too close to our hearts. And because of that, it's preventing us from seeing something that is infinitely greater. And not only that, but here in America, we're too comfortable. Uh, Our education, our prosperity, our wealth has made us so comfortable that heaven has become less inviting. We'll take the American dream over heaven nine times out of ten. Others neglect heaven because it simply doesn't appeal to them. Many think that heaven is this endless church service, this never-ending sing-along in the sky, and when you're you're not in church, you're going to be on a cloud somewhere, stringing a harp. And nothing could be further from the truth. And those who picture heaven as such do so because they have an incomplete and really an inaccurate view of what heaven is all about. We saw that others neglect heaven because Satan has deceived them. And I think he's done a very good job. We saw last week that heaven is one of the three things that that Satan lies about and slanders. And he does it uh, in order to convince us that heaven's just going to be a boring place where we will live a boring existence for all of eternity. And I think many, if not most, have bought into that lie that Satan has sold us. And finally, I think we neglect heaven because we view it as as a realm that is beyond our comprehension, that we simply cannot understand it. And it would be beyond our comprehension if God would not have revealed it to us in His Word through the Holy Spirit. Now, God certainly hasn't revealed all the details of heaven to us, but He has revealed more than most people think. So within this series, we're, we're going to be talking about heaven. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you up front, I'm going to be bringing some thoughts about heaven that you've probably never thought about. That you've probably never thought about. Many opinions and thoughts and songs, songs I've heard this week, give an inaccurate picture of what heaven truly is. Heaven is so much more than most of us realize, church. So much more. And I pray that through this series that we'll realize that and be comforted and encouraged and strengthened. I, I pray that we will, we, we, as, as we look and talk about heaven, it will fill us with joy and anticipation and prepare us for what is to come. But today I want to start by defining heaven. Heaven, by definition, describes that which is high and raised up. That which is overarching and and lofty and the bible actually uses the word heaven to describe three separate and very distinct uh, regions or entities first the bible uses heaven to describe the atmosphere or the air around the planet it is that region above the ground but below the stars and we're told in the bible that that rain and snow and and hail all fall from heaven we're told that the the morning dew comes down from heaven we're told that the birds of the air are actually the birds of the heavens so the first heaven that the bible mentions or makes reference to includes such things as as the wind and the clouds the thunder and and the lightning it's everything above the ground but within earth's atmosphere that's the first heaven that is referred to in scripture And that brings us to the second heaven. And the second heaven would be what we would call space. The Bible describes this region as the firmament or the expanse. In Genesis chapter 1, beginning in verse 14, we're told, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. 
So in the beginning, God created the lights and the heavens to, to divide the day from the night. So heaven, as it is referred to here, is that region that includes the sun and the stars, the, the planets and the galaxies, our, our solar system, and the, everything that exists within the universe. All these things make up the second heaven. And finally, we come to, to heaven itself, what the Bible calls the highest heaven or the heaven of heavens. The Apostle Paul in, in the book of Corinthians refers to it as the third heaven. The third heaven. And this heaven, by definition, is the dwelling place of God. That's what heaven is, by definition. It's that place which God created and calls His home. Before creation, God existed outside of time and space. Part of His creation was heaven. His dwelling place. Now, I think it's important to distinguish from the very beginning of our study that there is a present heaven and a future heaven. Okay? A present heaven and a future heaven. And even though they are both God's dwelling place, they're not the same. And I think failing to distinguish between this, these two heavens have dulled our thinking and it has prevented us from understanding critical biblical truths when it comes to heaven. Now the present heaven, where God currently dwells, is also that place where believers go when they die. That is the present heaven. Most of the time, I think, when we are referring to heaven, that's what we are referring to. We're referring to that place where God now dwells and where our loved ones now are. But this heaven is not God's ultimate home. And neither will it be ours. As I alluded to last week, and as we will discuss in weeks to come, God's ultimate plan is to bring heaven down to earth. Again, we're, we're told in Revelation chapter 21, beginning in verse 1, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city. New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and He will dwell with them. And they shall be His people, and God Himself shall be with them and be their God. This is where history is headed this is where we are headed as believers this morning, church. God's ultimate plan is not to take us up to a spiritual realm that is made for Him and His angels, but His ultimate plan is to come down and live in a physical realm made for us. And if you think about it, doesn't that match God's original design? Doesn't it? In the beginning, God didn't take Adam and Eve up to heaven up to heaven to visit him in his world. No, he came down and walked with them in their world. But sin has temporarily ruined that fellowship. But God is ultimately going to restore his original design and once again dwell with us on the new earth. And Jesus speaks to this very thing. We've just spiritualized it. God dwelling with men. He says in John chapter 14, verse 23, listen carefully. If a man loves me, he will keep my words. If a man truly loves me, he will be obedient to the Bible. And my Father will love him. And we will come to him and make our abode with him. Most fail to grasp this incredible truth. Most people are under the impression that God's original plan failed. And because of that, he's just going to throw it all away and start over. And nothing could be further from the truth. God is ultimately going to eradicate sin and restore everything back to his original design. Heaven will not be us dwelling with God. It'll be God dwelling with us. Dwelling with his resurrected people on this resurrected earth. Now, most of our study is going to be centered around that thought, on the eternal or the future heaven. And when I refer to the eternal or, or future heaven, I'm speaking of that place where we will live forever in our resurrected bodies. 
As I mentioned last week, God's ultimate plan is for us to live a resurrected life in resurrected bodies with the resurrected Christ on this resurrected earth. That is the plan. The plan of redemption. Read your Bibles from front to back. But because we all have loved ones who have died, and because we too will die, unless Christ comes first, yes, you are mortal, and you will die. I think it's important for us to consider what the Bible says about the present heaven. That place where believers dwell when they die. And God doesn't want us to be ignorant about it this morning. <laughs> Look at what Paul says here in our text. He, he says here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, But I would not have you to be ignorant concerning them which are asleep. God doesn't want us to be ignorant concerning those who have died in the Lord. That you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. If you are here this morning and you have lost a loved one, and most of us have, and if that loved one was a believer, you have hope today. And you have hope today because your loved one is in heaven. See, when a believer dies, he or she enters into what theologians call the present heaven. This is an intermediate state, a transitional period between life on earth and when we receive our resurrected bodies. Life on earth and when God recreates and makes the new earth. The present heaven is where believers exist in, a, in the time period between their physical death and their bodily resurrection. And there are a number of truths that we need to, to understand about the present heaven, and I'm going to try to cover them here this morning, but I couldn't. It's more material than we can cover in one sermon, because so we're going to divide it over two weeks. I'm going to try to keep it simple. It was too much information for me, and I know it was going to be too much information for you. But today we're going to look at some characteristics of the present heaven. The place where your loved one is right now. The place where you're headed as a believer if Christ doesn't return first. But I'm praying that he will. <laughs> and then next week we're going to look at what life is like in the present heaven. Now the first characteristic about the present heaven that we need to understand is this. It's only temporary. It's only temporary. The present heaven is not our final destination. Again, we are destined to live in resurrected bodies on a new resurrected earth. So right now in heaven, believers are waiting. Okay, they are waiting just like us. They are, they are waiting for the return of Christ. They are, they are waiting for their bodily resurrection. They are waiting for Him to issue judgment upon the world. They are waiting for the creation of the new heavens and the new earth. The present heaven, where our loved ones now reside, is only a temporary lodging place. A place where we will wait, and where they are waiting, until the return of Christ and our bodily resurrection. Think of the present heaven in these terms. Let's say you and your family inherit a beautiful mansion in Hawaii. Okay? Imagine it. It's a beautiful mansion. It's fully furnished, it's sitting on the hillside, it's overlooking the ocean. Okay? There's enough room for all your loved ones. And you decide to sell all you have to go to that mansion. Now on your way from Charlotte, you stop in Denver, where you're there for an evening, a few hours, where your family members all gather, coming from different locations around the country, before you head to Hawaii together. Now, is Denver your final destination? No, it's not. It's just a stop along the way. And that's what the present heaven is. It's a stop, although a wonderful stop. It's a stop along the way to our final destination, which is the eternal heaven on the new, new earth, where we will live forever with the Lord in our resurrected bodies. So the present heaven is only temporary. And I know that's hard to, to comprehend, but it's true. And you say, well, well, isn't heaven eternal? Yes, it is. Heaven is eternal. 
But that's not to say that heaven doesn't change locations. Okay? It changes locations. God is the only thing that never changes. The only thing. And God's Word clearly states at the end of John's revelation that the location of heaven will change. Heaven will be relocated to the new earth where we will enjoy Christ and live with one another forever. That's what the Bible says. So let me repeat, the present heaven is only temporary. It's only a stop along the way. It's not our final destination. Which brings us to a second thought. And that is the present heaven exists in an unseen realm. I think we can all agree with that one. Now, as I mentioned last week, a lot of people struggle with accepting that reality. That if you can't see it, then it can't possibly be real. But, but consider this. Scientists at Yale, Princeton, and Stanford, three of the most prestigious universities in the world, have recently come together... And they determined that there are at least ten unobservable dimensions and likely an infinite number of imperceivable universes out there. Now think about what they're saying. Scientists are admitting to the fact that there are other dimensions and other universes that we cannot see. That's what they're admitting to. Now if leading scientists believe that truth, why should any of us struggle with believing in one unobservable dimension that contains the Lord, His angels, and the souls of all the saints down through the ages. It shouldn't be that hard. The present heaven is a world we cannot see. And leading scientists agree that those realms exist. They believe that. But here's the thing. God has revealed this unseen realm to select men while they were on earth. Consider the prophet Elijah this morning when he asked God to give his servant a glimpse of this invisible realm. And God answered Elijah's prayer. Listen to what we're told in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 17. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes so he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. Imagine that moment, seeing that unseen realm. Imagine what that young man must have thought. I wonder what we would see this morning if God pulled back and peeled back the veil that's over our eyes. What would we see here this morning? I say there's angels all around us. Angels sitting in here today. What would he have seen this week as we were struggling? As you was battling, would, would there be a war raging? Chariots of fire, angels and and demons fighting one another. What will we see? Consider Stephen as he was being stoned for his faith. We're told in Acts chapter 7, beginning in verse 55, but Stephen, being full of the Holy Spirit, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and, and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened. And the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. As Stephen was being stoned, God opened up this unseen realm to him and allowed him to look into heaven and he saw Christ standing at the right hand of God. So there's this unseen realm all around us, just beyond our sight. And somewhere within this realm is the present heaven. That place where God and and His chosen people now dwell. It's just hidden from our sight. So the present heaven exists in an unseen realm. And not only does it exist in an unseen realm, but it exists in an angelic realm. Listen to the words of Jesus in, in Matthew chapter 18, verse 10. He says, Take heed that you don't despise one of these little ones. Jesus says, You better not despise the children. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels are always beholding the face of my Father which is in heaven. Heaven is full of angels. Jesus says in in heaven there are guardian angels watching over every child. Imagine that. Even every unborn child. And because we too were once children we have guardian angels as well. 
watching over us. Jesus says in Revelation chapter 3, verse 5, He that overcomes, the same shall be clothed in white remnant, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. So the present heaven is an angelic realm. And because of that, it has different qualities than the universe in which we live. It's different. Now, in this universe, I think everything is primarily physical with some spiritual elements sprinkled in. That's how, how, how I describe our universe. Okay? But in the present heaven, it's right the opposite. I think it's mainly spiritual with physical elements spread in. Think about it. Dwelling in heaven, in the present heaven, is God the Father. And Jesus says in, in John chapter 4, verse 24, God is a spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Think about your loved one this morning who has died. Think about them. They left their physical bodies here on earth, but their spirit, their soul, is now in heaven. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Those aspects of your loved one that, that made them unique, that made them who they are, is now in heaven. Their, their soul is in the presence of God, we're told. That includes their mind and their emotions, their will, their capacity to learn and, and think and to worship. The essence of everything that made them who they are is now in the presence of the Lord. So heaven has a spiritual aspect to it. And that's what we typically focus on. It's just spiritual. But heaven also has physical aspects. Things that we can feel and touch. Things that are tangible. Think about it. Right now in heaven, Jesus is dwelling in a physical, resurrected body. That you can feel and touch. We're told in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24, For Christ is not entered into the holy place, made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself. After his resurrection, Christ entered into heaven itself to appear in the presence of God. For who? For us. So at this very moment, Christ is dwelling in heaven in an actual physical resurrected body. Okay? Do we believe that? I pray we do. The resurrection is everything. When Stephen got a glimpse of heaven as he was being stoned, we're told that he saw Christ standing at the right hand of God. The Bible doesn't say he was floating, does it? Or that he was hovering in heaven? No, he was standing at the right hand of God. Now, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, I'll admit it. But to stand, you have to have two things. You've got to have a physical body... And secondly, you've got to have something to stand on. Can you agree with me? So there's a physical aspect here. And Christ may not be the only one with an actual physical body in heaven. Think about Elijah and Enoch. The Bible tells us that God took them to heaven before they experienced death. So right now in heaven, they've got a physical body. A real body. Now it's not a resurrected body like Christ. But it's some sort of body, nonetheless. Think about the angels. We're told in the Scriptures that at times angels can take human form. We read how Abraham pleaded with the, the pre-incarnate Christ and two angels that looked like men in regards to sparing Sodom and Gomorrah. They looked like men. We're told in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 2, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. For thereby some have entertained angels unaware. God's angels have the ability to take physical form. And what's to say that they're not taking physical form right now in heaven? We too may take some sort of physical form before our resurrection. God may. He may grant us some type of physical form. And I'll touch on that possibility next week. But we must take some type of form in order to be recognized and to recognize our loved ones, right? 
We can't just be floating around with no form and, oh, there's my, there went my brother. No. Don't be telling me that. I'm going to recognize him. I'll take some, form, some, some sort of form. So what I'm trying to show you is heaven is an angelic realm with both physical and spiritual qualities unlike anything we've ever experienced. Unlike anything we've ever experienced. We've got to get away from this idea that heaven is st- strictly a spiritual place. We've spiritualized it too much. Heaven is an unseen realm. It's angelic and has physical and spiritual qualities about it. And finally, I want you to notice that the present heaven is paradise. During the crucifixion, the thief on the cross asked Jesus to remember him when he came into the kingdom. And Jesus responded with these words in, in Luke chapter 23, verse 43. He said, Verily I say unto you, Today you shall be with me in paradise. Jesus refers to the present heaven as, as paradise. But what does that mean? I think that means something different from, for each of us when we think of paradise. For some of you here today, paradise is living down in the Caribbean on the side of the ocean. That's paradise for you. For others of you, it's being out in nature, on the water, on the river, hunting. That's paradise for you. Some of you would want an extended vacation. That would be paradise for you. Paradise is different for all of us. Well, the word paradise that Jesus uses here refers to a place that brings great pleasure. Great pleasure. It comes from a a Persian word that means a walled park, an enclosed garden. That's what it literally means, an enclosed garden. It was used to describe the, the great walled gardens of the Persian king, the Persian empire. These gardens were referred to as paradise during this time. They were magnificent, beautiful. They had, a, had cultivated areas with all types of, of exquisite plants and animal wildlife that were tediously kept by, by certain individuals. And what made these gardens so magnificent is that they combined the beauty of creation, the, the beauty of nature with the ingenuity and the imagination of the human mind. That's what made it paradise. And this is how Jesus describes heaven. But here's what we need to understand this morning. This is the same word that is used to describe the Garden of Eden. We're told in Genesis chapter 2 verse 8, And the Lord God planted a garden. The word garden here literally means an enclosed garden. A paradise. God planted a paradise east of Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Here in Genesis, paradise was an actual physical place where God and his people lived together. Man was surrounded by incredible beauty. It was a place man enjoyed great pleasures and unhindered happiness. Could it be this morning that this great walled garden, this paradise that we read in Genesis, could it be that this paradise is the same paradise that Jesus is referring to on the cross? Could it be? Is that too much to assume? We know that in the Garden of Eden, way back in Genesis, in the very first book of the Bible, I remind you, that there was a tree of life. Way back in Genesis. And listen to what Jesus says in Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. In the last book of the Bible, He says, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Jesus says, listen to me, church. Listen to me. Are you going to miss something? To him that overcomes, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Eden was not destroyed. What was destroyed was our ability to live in it because of sin. That's what was destroyed. After the fall, we're told in Genesis chapter 3, verse 24, that that God drove out the man. 
And he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims, angels, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. After the fall, God closed the garden. He would not allow sin to corrupt it. And then he removed it from this realm so that we could no longer access it. That's what the Bible says. But on the cross, God was opening the garden back up to all who would believe. And He's promising this thief today that you're going to be walking with me in paradise, in the garden. That's where our loved ones are today, church. That's where our loved ones are today. They're in the paradise of God, walking in the garden with Christ. Right now, they're surrounded by incredible beauty. Incredible beauty. Unimaginable beauty. They're they're enjoying great pleasures, unhindered happiness. Just like Adam and Eve, God has granted them dominion over a lot of His creation. And we too in heaven will have dominion. We will reign. We are kings and queens. We will reign over things. That's what our loved ones are doing right now. There's no more sin in heaven. Your loved one is free from the curse of sin. And I told you last week, I'm looking forward to that. I'm tired of living under the curse. I'm tired of seeing what the curse does to to people. I'm tired of seeing what it's done to the world. I'm, I'm tired of seeing what it's done to my loved ones. Tired of it. I'm also tired of dealing with the guilt and the shame of sin. But in paradise, there is no shame. There is no shame. Remember how it was before the fall? Adam and Eve walked naked before God. Heck, I can't even walk naked before my wife and not feel shame. Much less God. You know what I'm talking about. In paradise, there's no shame. Imagine that. No shame. To be in the presence of God unashamedly. Man, that's probably what I'm looking forward to the most. Not being, feeling ashamed. You're in the paradise of God. That's what heaven is. Life in the present heaven is far better than the best of life here on this earth. Than the best of life here on this earth. Paul says in Philippians chapter 1, verse 23, For I am in a strait between the two, having a desire to depart, to leave this world, and to be with Christ in heaven, which is far better than life on this earth. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but just not today. The Bible says the present heaven is far better than life on this earth. The best of life on this earth compares to nothing in heaven. But in the end, church, and again I'll state it, the paradise of God will be brought down to the new earth. It'll be brought back down to us. As we have seen today, the tree of life was in the garden at the very beginning. And then Jesus told us in Revelation chapter 2 that the tree of life is now in paradise. And then in the very last chapter of the Bible, we are told this, New Jerusalem has descended to the new earth. And listen to what John sees in Revelation chapter 22, beginning in verse 1. We're told, And the Lord showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, in the midst of the street of it. And on either side of the river was the tree of life. There it is again. The same tree keeps showing up in the Bible which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. In the end, in the eternal heaven, the tree of life is sitting in the center of the garden. The garden is in the center of New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem is the center of the new earth and the new earth is the center of the new universe. That's what the Bible teaches. And the centerpiece of it all is Jesus Christ. He's the centerpiece of it all. All this is possible because of His redemptive work on the cross. Church, it is time to get our minds off the things of the world. 
and set our affection on our Lord and Savior because Him and Him alone has made all this possible. God has a beautiful plan of redemption. We've just failed to see it. All this time, it's been in front of us. It's been in front of me. And we've failed to see it. May we fail no longer, church. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you today. And Lord, we thank you for what your word says about heaven. And Lord, we thank you for this paradise, this, this masterpiece that is your plan of redemption. And Lord, how heaven right now is just a temporary dwelling place until we reach our final destination, until our loved ones reach their final destination. Lord, we are being resurrected for a reason. And that's to live in physical bodies on a new earth. And Father God, I know that right now we can't see heaven. Lord, it's a realm that is different from our realm with both physical and spiritual properties. But Lord, it's a garden. A walled garden. Where you've given our loved ones freedom to reign and to rule. To walk with you unashamedly, free from sin. Father God, if we have people here today that have lost loved ones and are grieving that loss, Lord, allow them to see that their loved one is, is all right. And Lord, if we put our faith in you, Lord, it's going to be all right with us too. Lord, all is well with our soul this morning because of the cross. Lord, I thank you for your plan. And Lord, I thank you for revealing it to us in your word. Lord, I pray that you open our eyes, open our hearts to things that are spiritual, Lord. We've let songs and we've let thoughts and opinions define heaven for far too long. Lord, it's, it's time to get back to the biblical principles, biblical truths about your eternal home. Lord, I thank you for our time together, Lord, and I pray that our eyes are opened, Lord, that we can see clearly now. Father God, we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. I'm going to ask that we stand. God has been speaking to you this week. Why don't you come? If there's a decision that you need to make, whether it be baptism or faith in Christ, maybe it's rededicating your life or joining the church, or maybe you're just struggling this week. There's been that unseen war raging all around you. Why don't you come to the altar and lay it down? As we listen to the song of invitation, I believe it's appropriate this morning as we sing. <clears throat> I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear falling on my ear The Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me i am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever And the sound of his voice is so sweet The birds hush their singing And the melody that he gave to me Within my heart is ringing and And he tells me I am his own And the joy we share as we tarry there None other has ever known 
I'd stay in the garden with him Though the night around me be falling But he bids me go through the voice of woe His voice to me is called This morning, it is my privilege to <clears throat> uh, announce that uh, Austin and, and Kayla Vogler are coming to uh, join and officially join here at Hope Community Church. Uh, we have had the opportunity to get to know them through the years. Uh, uh, Austin is one of my disciple, discipleship group guys, and just uh, being able to, uh, to, to see his heart and be a part of his life over the last uh, four or five months has been incredible. And uh, today, again, they are making it official. They have both been uh, baptized by immersion, uh, have put their uh, faith in Christ, and are in agreement with our Constitution and bylaws. Uh, so today, we welcome them into our fellowship. So let's just give them a round of applause. <laughs> Want to say anything? All right. <laughs> Nobody ever wants to say anything. <clears throat> My voice is given out this morning. Uh, but uh, God bless you for being here today. I told you early on that you're going to hear things about heaven that you've probably never heard before uh, but I'm going to guide you through it and I pray that it opens our eyes to what heaven is truly all about uh, and I'm looking forward to it church and uh, keep in mind that Christ is the one who's made all this possible it's a beautiful plan of redemption that he's provided for us uh, may God bless you here this morning let us close our service today in prayer father God we come to you today and uh, Lord we just thank you for the truths that we have in scripture Lord that you've not left us alone Lord, that you don't want us to be ignorant about what, what awaits us on the other side. And uh, Lord, uh, what a plan it is. Lord, it's just unfathomable whenever you read the, the scriptures from front to back and see what you're doing in the scriptures. See what you're going to do in history. Lord, your plan of redemption, Lord, is perfect. It's a masterpiece. And uh, Father God, I pray that those here today who have lost loved ones, Lord, that they have hope, renewed hope here today, that all is well. Lord, that our loved ones are walking in the garden with you. And uh, Father God, we can't imagine that right, right yet, but uh, Lord, there's a day coming when we'll experience it. And uh, Lord, I just pray that you will just uh, continue to fight the good fight. Lord, I pray that every person under the sound of my voice will continue to run their race. Lord, we pray today, for, especially for this week, for Vacation Bible School. Lord, I pray for all of our, our teachers, all the, the people helping in any capacity. And, Lord, I just pray, Lord, you'll just allow your presence, your peace to settle in among this place. And, Lord, that your will will be done. Lord, we'll plant seeds, Lord, so, that, so the kids can see that their life is valuable in your eyes. And, uh, Father God, I pray that in the process we'll tear down the lives of this society, this culture that we're living in. Father God, I pray for the kids that will be coming out. And, Lord, I just pray that you just prepare their hearts, Lord. And we know that the angels in heaven after the day are looking down on them. 
And uh, Lord, what a great responsibility we've been given here at the church. And Lord, I pray that you'll just find us faithful in everything that we do, faithful in our service. Lord, as you continue to pour out your blessings upon us, Lord. Lord, I thank you for every home that is represented here today. Lord, I pray that you'd look after them, that you'd be with them. And uh, Lord, that we return again next Sunday to learn more about you, to learn more about your home. Lord, we ask these things in Christ's name and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. <clears throat>